Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Blaze Experience once again. You are joining us for episode 75 today. Yeah, we actually have hit episode 75. It, you know, it's been a good ride so far, and I can't believe we are already at 75. You know, so the next uh, good milestone we're going to have is at 100, and we'll be hitting 100 later this year sometime. So stick around, and we should, um, I don't know what we're going to do yet, but we're going to do something special for that. That'll probably be around, I think, October, November, we're going to hit 100. So that should be uh, fun at the end of the year. But at the top of the show, we do have some news. Our next stream is going to be Sunday, 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on Mixer.com slash Blaze Experience. We're going to be playing co-op for Generation Zero. This will be my first experience co-op with it. We're going to play with uh, OTG Zero. He was a Mixer streamer that was part of the K-Fest. So we're going to play with him. We're going to check out Generation Zero from the co-op perspective because I've only tried it from solo so far. So that should be fun. And our next podcast is actually going to be Saturday, April 13th. That's next Saturday. That's going to be on the Choose Your Own Apocalypse update for Save the K2. So I'm going to have a roundtable of guests. And my goal is to try and have guests that I haven't had on the podcast as much because there's some great guests I haven't had on before. So we're going to try and have some guests that you haven't heard from or maybe haven't heard from as much. And we're going to talk about their thoughts on the new update. And that should give you a different perspective possibly. And last but certainly not least, we actually have some patrons that joined our Patreon. So thank you, everyone that joined. Uh, if you want to join our Patreon, basically what it is, it's a way to support content creators for the content they're making. I obviously do this podcast, and I also do streaming, so those are the two main forms of content I do. And if you join my Patreon, basically it's a way to support me monthly for the content I create, and you get some extra rewards for doing that. So if you're listening to this, you know, you're never going to have to pay for the podcast. It's always going to be free. This is just a way to support what I'm doing if you... Uh, are so inclined to do so, and you get extra rewards for doing so. So, for example, we have two patrons that join the $1 level, which is the standard experience, OTG0 and Coconut Kid 123 Thank you both. Thank you very much for joining that level. I really appreciate that. And at that level, basically what you get is you get a shout-out on the podcast like they're getting now. You also get a special Patreon member Discord role in the Discord. So, basically, it'll say uh, in the Discord when you're in the Discord, Patreon member, and then we actually had another patron as well. At the $10 double experience level, this is the third level, we actually had Maximilian Colby, so thank you very much as well, Max. You know, $10 is awesome, and I really appreciate you doing that, so thank you very, very much for doing that, and for doing that, he actually gets some extra rewards as well. He gets everything at the $5 rewards, which at the $5 rewards, you get a special Patreon member role in the Discord, which is actually a uh, different role than the $1 level. It's basically, you know, a extra level. You get the thank you on the show like he's getting right now. And then you get access to a monthly Patreon-only podcast. So basically, it's a podcast that's going to be only on Patreon every month. There's going to be one. You get the ability to make suggestions on the Patreon-only podcast and the Patreon Sunday live streams. So basically, on the live streams on Sunday... And the patron podcast, you get the ability to make suggestions on that. And then your show, your name goes in the show notes of every podcast. So in the show notes of every podcast, you will see Max's name now. And then for the $10 level, what he gets extra on top of that is he gets top priority to play with me on stream. So basically, at this time, Max would have top priority to play with me on stream over anyone because he is at that level. And uh, no one is at that level besides him right now. So he would basically be the sole one that gets top priority right now. So if you want to go to that level, you would get priority over anyone else as well. And then he also gets guaranteed that one of his suggestions for either a game stream or a monthly patron podcast would be used at some point. So basically, if he makes a suggestion, I might not always use it, but he can kind of veto that one time. So one time, he's like, oh, I really want you to, you know, play this game on stream on Sunday. And he can basically, you know, throw that in there and be like, okay, I want this to be the one time that you definitely play the game I want and that I'd have to play that game. So that's, you know, one of the perks you get for that. And the last level is a $15 level, which uh, we don't have anyone at yet, but you actually get some extra perks for that as well. So I won't call that out yet because we don't have anyone at that level yet, but there are some perks beyond that too. So thank you very much, OTG0, Coconut Kid 123 and Maximilian Colby. I really appreciate you guys joining. And once again, if you want to join Patreon and support me that way, it's going to be patreon.com slash blaze experience, and that's spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N. So thank you very much. But that being said, we do have an episode here to talk about. 
we are actually going to get back into Dead by Daylight once again. So it's been a little while since we talked about Dead by Daylight. The last episode we did was on February 7th, which was episode 66, and that was two months ago. So we basically skipped a month, and the reason for that was just there was so much coming out at once that we kind of had to, you know, backlog it a little bit. But now we are back to talk about it again. So, of course, as always with the Dead by Daylight podcast, I do have my co-host for this podcast with me, ACC. He is a Mixer streamer that you definitely need to check out. He's a great streamer, and you know he's much better than I am at Mixer streaming, so definitely check him out. Please welcome back to the podcast, ACC. Hey, hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate that, and thanks for the humbling words. You, <laughs> you're definitely higher than my level, sir. Thank you, but that was awfully nice of you. <laughs> I, I, I disagree with that, but I, I think you're really <laughs> awesome. You know, I, you're one of my favorite streamers of all time, so... Oh, thanks, man. Thanks no a problem. lot. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, if you guys haven't checked out ACC, you know, he has a great personality, and anytime you're in his stream, you'll love it. So Thank you. I appreciate that. No problem. <laughs> but <laughs> we are back to talk some more Dead by Daylight. It's been a little while, but like I said, you know, just things got busy, and uh, we had to push it back. <laughs> we're back to talk about it again. We have some new news to talk about. Definitely here. Yeah, we're definitely here now. So much news. Um, definitely we had to hold back. Like, uh, like Blaze said, there was, like, two big things that were coming up. We had to get them in there, um, and, well, it has arrived, so... Yeah, and it's, you know, good things come to those that wait, because actually, since we waited, there's actually two new chapters we're going to talk about today, which, you know, it makes... It's really great that way, because we actually get two chapters in one episode. Absolutely. Super exciting stuff, man. Um, I know a lot of Evil Dead fans out there uh, didn't see this coming, um, and they're super excited. And, of course, uh, that's the survivor aspect, and then we also got a new killer, which uh, has been reigning terror uh, since <laughs> it's come out. <laughs> which I know we said last episode we talk about tips for killers. We're actually going to do that in our next episode, so look for that next time. But this one we decided to do a shorter episode on the new news because there's a lot of big news with all the stuff that came out that we kind of wanted to devote a full episode to that because if we did both in the same episode, it'd probably be like a two-hour episode. So <laughs> definitely would be man. <laughs> without a shadow of a doubt, it would be. It'd be. I think it'd be a lot longer than that. But exactly. Without further ado, we got some but, great news. Yeah, the new chapter that did come out is called "Demise of the Faithful," and this has a new killer called the Plague. Do you want to tell people a little bit about the Plague and maybe a little bit of lore on it before we get into the perks and stuff? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, it seems to be. Uh, so the Plague is a. I would say a spiritual demonic entity <laughs> that <laughs> that uh, that rains curses upon its prey, and what it does is it uh, actually pukes out uh, toxic vile, infectious vile uh, at you. So this green, it's it's as if you're watching a scene from The Exorcist when she pukes at the priest. If you've ever seen The Exorcist. <laughs> The plague yeah, actually, it. yeah, it pukes its vial at you to lay infection on you, which can slow you down, hinder everything. And um, if she continues chasing you with it, she can actually put you in a wounded state where she can hit you finally and down you. Now, with this puke, we can heal ourselves where there is fountains of water everywhere. And we go to these fountains of water to cleanse ourselves from the infection. Now, once we use it, the clear water becomes corrupted, so into a blood vial, where then the plague killer can come in and suck that vial, and now her infectious vial becomes ta uh, corrupt vial, and it becomes a, a red puke, where it actually becomes as if she can hit you. So instead of her swinging her lantern at you, she can she can just puke at you and and take you down. So it's uh it's quite epic uh, what she can do, and she's quite fast. Um, I think she's definitely going to be up there amongst one of the top killers now. I think they they really put together uh, a good balance killer this time out, uh, as opposed yeah, to yeah, it last definitely two. seems that way. And you know, unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to purchase this killer yet, so I haven't had a chance to try her out. But I know you have a little bit, and I guess the first question I have for you is. You said that, you know, basically with this puke, she can eventually hit you and knock you down with that. So how does she compare to the Huntress, for example? Because the Huntress is the only other killer that you can actually throw something. Yes, so it's another ranged killer, right? The Huntress was, it was a great character, uh, I think overlooked a lot of the times. I think because people are intimidated by the, the hatchets. But when you get used to it, you'll, you'll get there. With the Plague, 
her her vial when she pukes that out, it actually goes a far distance, so she can get you uh, from a good distance. I think um, definitely a great ranged killer, good speed, uh, just a lot of trouble all round. Like not only can she hit you with this and infect you, uh, she can put it on to generators, pallets. So when you hop over, you get infected. So. There are things you can do, not just on you, but around the, uh, the objects that we need to get to and kind of like slow us down in the process. Do you know if it works on Windows as well? Um, I tried it on Windows. It did not work on Windows. Okay, so Windows are safe still? Yeah, for the time being. And I figured because if she's chasing you, you hop over a window, she just puke on you. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But pallets, but, definitely. Yeah, the whole pallet thing is yeah. crazy because, I mean, you know, most people just, you know, use pallets as their, like, defense, which you're supposed to, obviously, but. I mean, now that kind of goes away a little bit because she can just puke on the pallet and then you're like, oh, shoot, what am I going to do here? Exactly. When you get pinned in that corner and you have no choice, like you're going to have to. And another thing that happens while the while she, when she captures the survivor and hooks them and they're infected with plague, the the survivor that comes to, for the rescue will also be at risk of the plague. So basically when you unhook the infected survivor, she will puke on you <laughs> because she's sick. And you will now become infected, so you will now have to go to find yourself a fountain to cleanse yourself as well. And I believe that also applies, like, um, say you got somebody off a hook, right, and I actually healed that person, I would probably get infected too by healing them because they're still plagued, right? Exactly. Right away, yeah. So that really, you know, kills a whole team there because they all have to go for that fountain, you know. Well, yeah. I don't know if you tried as a survivor versus the plague, but... How is that whole fountain mechanic as a survivor versus play? Well, the good thing about which I really liked is that when you go cleanse yourself in the fountain, that you are automatically healed. So you don't need to heal yourself or be healed. The The fountain actually fully restores your health and cleans you from infection. So you'll be infection free. That's actually pretty good, though. So it kind of makes it fair that way because there's only one fountain in the game, correct? No, there are several. It's almost like oh, the okay. jigsaw. You know, a scenario boxes. where all the boxes are around. There's fountains everywhere around, yeah. And do you know if the the plague can actually see where those fountains are at all times? Kind of like the jigsaw boxes? Exactly. She can see okay. everything. She knows what's been touched. She knows what's been corrupted. So she can go to it and take the corrupted uh, liquid. Which makes sense. It makes it a little bit more fair for her. Because if she couldn't even exactly. see those, then I mean, it'd basically be you know, way in the survivor's advantage. Exactly. So they did a really good job, I feel, of the balancing in this. It, it was great. In your opinion, how has the meta sort of been with the plague so far? Do you think the communities liked it? you think the communities hated it? I know they hated the Legion when that came out. I think there's a lot of good feedback coming from it. Um, I do not see a problem. I think uh, well, the thing was weird is that obviously the first day everyone was playing the plague. The next, I think it was a couple days later, I came back, or a week later, I came back to play, and there was no plagues. But then uh, the other day, <laughs> next day after I'd played, there were several plagues. So I was kind of worried. I was like, oh, the feedback to this is, I guess, poor. Um, but I'm seeing a good balance of a lot of plague. So I no, think people good, are though, liking I, it. Yeah. I think it's really cool and unique, because I think the plague kind of combines elements that the Huntress has, you know, with the range, but... It also kind of combines elements that the Doctor has, too, with, you know, where the Doctor makes you break out of that mental state. So it kind of combines elements of that as well. Exactly. Um, definitely, you're on your toes. <laughs> yeah, definitely on the toes. The or you can, can, even, be a you can even make comparison with Freddy, too, because, I mean, Freddy, you had to break out of the dream state. So it kind of compares to that a little bit, too. Yes. Uh, definitely, can you have to break out of the dream state. Definitely, you need to your head down to a fountain immediately. And she can see what's going on, and it'll make a noise. Uh, it'll alert us when she's taken corruption. You'll just hear, like, a chime. So you know when she's taken the corrupted bile. So it, it's it, they did a good job. I think so, anyways. Yeah, I think it's you know going to be a really great thing for the game, and I do agree with you that this is going to be one of the most used killers now, and I think you know it may surpass some killers that sort of were meta before, so I think it's going to be really good for the game, actually. I definitely and agree. Like we were talking about, too, one of the coolest things for me about you know having this uh, plague cure, or not this plague cure, plague killer, is that if you infect a survivor... They can't just go run to a generator and do that generator because that generator is going to be infected. If they're infected, they can do the generator. But if she pukes on the generator, 
then you're gonna have to hold off. You can do the gen while it's doing, but you will be, you know, you're at risk of infection. That's for sure. Yeah. But if you're already peaking yourself, it infects it as well. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So if you, if you're already peaking yourself as well, basically, yeah. you're a walking infection that kind of yeah. acts as her agent. So it's, yeah. You it's, need to find a fountain. Like the, yeah. it's immediate. Like <laughs> if you're infected, and you think you're gonna do a gen, everything slows you down, right? Like right. you need to go get cleansed yeah and that kind of brings it back to you know the pig with the jigsaw things it kind of has elements of that too because basically you know if you have the trap on your head with the pig you pretty much have to go find the jigsaw box right away because if a gen gets done you have that on then you're you're on borrowed time so basically it's kind of the same thing with this where you have to find that pool of devotion so i really love how the plague actually has elements of you know say the doctor it has elements of the huntress it has elements of the pig all combined in one yeah i totally agree um just finally, they got it right, I feel. Like, you know what I mean? I think a lot of people Agreed. were disappointed with the unbalancing of other killers that they brought out. Uh, this one, they're getting it right. And this was this was really good. No, I definitely agree. And have you tried the new map that's like her uh, specific map yet? Yeah, I have. Uh, it's it's almost like it's... Uh, so it's like Red Forest modified to what it is now. It looks like, uh, like a, you're more in a temple type right in the center yeah, it's, 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 it's like all ruined. It's exactly called. right so you're looking at a temple straight center um looks really cool i like it um with a touch of the red forest which is you know it's rainy the hunter's kind of map uh really fun to play i've only played it two times but i'm surprised because i thought we'd get it a lot more i haven't seen it because um, they did a good job of uh dvd has done a great job of now balancing maps uh, this one I have not seen often, though. I've only seen, got to play it twice, but it was really cool playing it. Yeah, it seems really cool for the pictures, but um, from what the description says, it says it's a half-forgotten temple complex dedicated to cleansing the high priest's followers. The vertiginous hypno, hypo-style hall was believed to hold the weight of the heavens. Stolen from the memories of the plague, the temple was planted in the howling red forest whose winds eroded its smooth edges. It now stands as a beacon of fear visible from all cardinal points. So basically, I kind of picture it as, like, it's somewhere in the Red Forest. They basically just planted this temple there. This is, like, her domain, this temple in the Red Forest. Yeah, man. It, it leaves for an intense experience. I I, it's, I find it really fun to play, especially in the temple. It's really cool. Um, it's a nice look. Um, another good job on the map make. So really, really good stuff. Awesome. Yeah, and, I mean, personally, I don't really have... Any maps besides one that I don't like. It's just Leary's that I don't like. But <laughs> Yeah, everyone uh, doesn't like Leary's, especially when they're getting started. Yeah. <laughs> it eventually grows on you, but uh, not anytime soon, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Definitely not anytime soon. Yeah, that's the only map in the whole game that I'm like, oh, man, this map? Seriously? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It makes sense. No doubt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get used to it eventually. <laughs> no, absolutely. But we could probably talk about the uh, the place perks now because we haven't talked about the perks yet. So do you want to read off her first perk, Corrupt Intervention? Yeah, so Corrupt Intervention. This is an interesting one. I think um, out of all of them, this is definitely my favorite. So when you start the trial, and if you have a Tier 3, uh, so that's a full maxed out perk, Corrupt Intervention, what it does is basically when you start the trial, wherever the killer is far away from, so if she is from in the opposite side of the map of you, the entity will block the generators. So Claws, the entity that takes you when you are hooked, will block the generators for as high as two minutes, which is huge. That's crazy. <laughs> so it forces you to get near where she started to start a generator. It will block up to three. So um, I've seen it a few times, and man, I'll tell you, it really helps slow down the game um, for that temporary start of the time. But two minutes in that game, time is everything in DVD. Two minutes yeah. in that game, especially if you have a ruin, can cause quite a bit of a nightmare. Well, and from perspective, too, the survivor perk Deja Vu, the max that that can give you is 60 seconds where you can view three generators. So that's a, a whole minute on top of that so imagine if you have deja vu and you're like oh i see three generators oh wait they're all blocked like and then they block for an extra minute after you can see them yes yes so th that's just crazy to think about yes so <laughs> it's it's uh it's not a park that you're gonna be like oh whatever it's one of those like oh my yeah gosh, and, and even go. at level one it's still 80 seconds so it's still over a minute level one well especially if she finds someone puts you in trouble 
and you're caught into that that situation where you know she's downing people right off the bat within a minute or two of that it could cause a lot of trouble and a lot of headache yeah i could see a situation where it goes really bad for the survivors where you know she's farthest from one side of the map three generators are blocked she finds someone on the side of the map that the generators aren't blocked so then you have the killer running around the side of the map that's not blocked and then the other side's blocked yes so yes. that's a really rough situation for survivors yes have you seen that situation yet or no Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Quite a few times. So it, it's gotten to that situation. So yeah, it, it's intense. I can't wait to try that out. I mean, so I haven't seen the new killer yet and I haven't played as her, but I, I definitely want to. So I'm really curious to try this out because I can only imagine you know, how intense that feels. Oh, yeah. It's 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 super intense, but uh, <laughs> I, I enjoy it. I'm not going to lie. I'm a survivor main, but I enjoy like the the challenge. It's fun. Absolutely. But the second perk she has is Infectious Fright. And this says, The cries of the unfaithful make your heart leap. Any survivors that are within the killer's terror radius while another survivor is put into the dying state with your basic attack will yell and reveal their current location of the killer for four, five, or six seconds. So this one, I think, really isn't that helpful. Maybe you can disagree with me, but I don't really see a lot of use for this one. I don't think it's a... It's definitely not one of the strongest ones. So basically, yeah, they're put in a dying state. And within that radius, uh, she'll be able to see the mark the locations where everyone currently is. But you know, even if it was as long as six seconds, she's got her in a dying stage. She's going to pick everybody up. She can have an idea of where they last were. But by the time she gets to a hook, there that location is just no way that anyone's going to be near that location. So, I yeah, not a, definitely not a strong perk. Not something useful for sure. But, yeah, I mean, um, you can tell me if you agree with this, but I think mm -hmm. this doesn't really fit well with her, but I could see this actually fitting really well on, like, a hillbilly, because if you slug a bunch of people with a hillbilly, this could actually work with a hillbilly. Yes, so for a hillbilly, per se, yes, absolutely, because he can just zoom down there immediately right. and try to take the targets down, which is, yes, definitely, definitely a deadly combination for a hillbilly. And it could even work with Leatherface a little bit, but I think hillbilly is a little bit better of an option. Uh, definitely hillbilly would be the way to go because of his just, he's the fastest zoom, yeah. killer. Yeah, he's he's the fastest killer in the game, which I, you know, seen a lot of last night. I think every game I played last night was a hillbilly, which right. reminded me how incredibly annoying he is. So it's just to think of him with this, with this perk. Yeah, that'd be uh, crazy because basically, you know, he, he knocks one person <laughs> down he could see where the next person is, just zoom right over to them while they're on the dice state. So. Exactly. So definitely so, not the best. <laughs> I could see it working on the nurse possibly too, because she can zoom around the map a little bit. She can, but I just think she's a little too slow for it. I think you just want to get the hook and get it over with. I think the only right. one they would realistically work for would be Billy. Maybe even Huntress at a certain range. You can toss a hatchet there. That's true, yeah. In the meantime, you know, and see if she can land a shot. Um, that's also a, a good person that maybe it'd be useful for, but you'd have to be really good at the craft of a, a huntress to pull that off. Yeah, that's why it's kind of interesting to me, though, because this perk is on the plague, and I really don't think it helps the plague that much, but for the hillbilly, this is going to make your day in hillbilly. Hillbilly, sure. I even think for Freddy, because they, if they down someone, they'll be able to see where they are. It's pretty much a deer stalker right there. You know, so he can actually True. go to that location, put them in a dream state, and then come back and get the other one. Another possible, but hands down, Billy, it's, it is toxic, for sure. Which, I mean, imagine if you had, you know, Infectious Fright on with barbecue and chili as well. Like, you could pretty much just see survivors anywhere. So. Yes. Oh, my gosh. So, that'd be a great combo. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Don't use that on me, people, please. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> But do you want to say the last perk for the plague? Yeah, so you're looking at uh, Dark Devotion. Now, Dark Devotion is an obsession perk. So immediately uh, you become obsessed. He, you'll become obsessed uh, as the plague will make come in contact with the <clears throat> excuse me the obsession. Uh, every attack she does, uh, what it does, it, it admits for about 20 seconds. You're looking at actually actually as high as 20 to 30 seconds. The terrier radius is at zero. So when she's attacking, when she hits the obsession against token points, that's what's going to basically happen at that point is where the Terrier Radius is eliminated for about 20 seconds um, in a 32 meter range. Uh, it's it's next. It is next level for people. Now, 
keep in mind the obsession will still hear the beats, but the other three will be oblivious to where she is. Um, it can be triggered. Uh, every it depends on what level tier you have, but I believe 30, 60, 45, or thirty. Yes, so I believe thirty seconds would be. The it's almost like it's almost like exhaustion. So when right. you're doing sprint bursts, you know it's about sixty seconds before you recover. That's every. Can you imagine getting that every thirty seconds, where you don't know where she's coming from, for a good twenty seconds every time she's unlocked with the obsession. So, it's okay. I don't. I think other killers again. This would be useful. Maybe a Billy again. This would like. This is like a a Billy's wet dream, to to have. <laughs> To have Infectious Fright and in Dark Devotion, because can you imagine that right. now? You've caught the obsession, you know where they are for six seconds, and you zoom by, and it eliminates sound. Um, definitely, definitely uh, a strong And one. honestly, I could kind of see it working on my favorite kill a little bit, the pig. Like, if you put this on the pig, she already has where she can crouch and get rid of her terror readers too, so you can really fuck with people's minds and, like, you know, have the terror readers go away when she's crouched, or you could use Dark Devotion. Have the survivors make a terror race, so they really wouldn't have no idea where you are. Exactly. So, uh, you know, I'm I'm up in the air with this one. I haven't really seen it utilized uh, with me yet. Like, I haven't experienced a plague uh, where I didn't know she was coming yet. But I think this is a useful perk, definitely. If not for her, others. Yeah, I think the way to use it, maybe I'm wrong on this, because I'm not, like, that great of a killer yet. But I think the way to use it is, say you're on my recession and I hit you. I think the way to use it is not actually chase you, go in the other direction and pop the perk, actually have you going out the radius. People are going to run away from you and run right towards me. Agreed. Yeah. So I think... Uh, so like you don't want to actually hook your obsession. No. No. Um, interesting stuff. I, I think it, it, it definitely adds danger to other killers in their arsenal. Um, so... Yeah, another another good one, I think. These, I'm just up in the air with that one. I'm, I'm kind of 50-50 in the fence because I just want to see it utilized, but I can see some killers really benefiting off that. Do you think you can work on Myers at all? Do you think that would work or no? I don't think it needs to with him because if you put Monitor and Abuse with Michael, which is an absolute nightmare, he's a lim his, he already has no terror radius to begin with at tier right. 1, right? We put him at tier two, yeah, it goes up, but then once you put monitor abuse, it already eliminates his terror. You know what I mean? It puts him back to like no terror radius. So I just don't I don't think that would work for him just because he's already he's already a nightmare, you know what I mean? Right. With it. And the fact that he already has his terror radius eliminated, I think it'd be a waste for him specifically. That kinda makes sense, yeah. I definitely would be interested to try it on the pig, though. I think on the pig, this could actually be a pretty useful perk. Well, I think so, too. I think um, because she has the crouch, and now when she has to stand up with monitor and abuse, too, I think, yeah, she would just be a stealthy, stealthy villain. So, And that's what she's meant to be, so. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But that are the those are the perks for the plague. So basically, <laughs> in our opinion, it sounds like Infectious Fright and Dark Devotion are situational they might work better for some other killers instead of the plague but corrupt intervention is definitely a next level yeah that one is definitely the one right there um yeah just, that's uh, definitely the yeah, best one of the three i think so and it's the first one you can actually unlock so if you're leveling exactly, her up nice. at 30 so it's good yeah but as part of this pack we actually got a new survivor as well called jane Rero, and jane has three perks as well so one of her perks is solidarity and this basically Gives a sharing painful experiences, has the power to heal. So while injured, healing a survivor without using a med kit also heals you at a 40, 45, or 50% conversion rate. Yeah, so basically, uh, you're getting rewarded for healing someone, right? You're healing yourself at the same yeah. time. I think, uh, before we get to the other ones, I think this one, hands down, is the best one. Uh, the fact that you can heal someone and whatever you healed them out of, you will healing, healing yourself, which buys you a lot of time. That's great. I love it. No, I agree. Because, I mean, if you're both injured at the same time, then this is perfect. You you just heal them, and then <sighs> there you go. You get half your health back as well. So, exactly. That's great. And you want to read the next one? Mine, it's actually blanked out for me. Yeah. I All right. It won't load it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> the next one is Poised. 
Achieving gold boosts your confidence. After a generator is completed, you leave no scratch marks for 6, 8, or 10 seconds. So for this one, I could see it maybe working a little bit situational. Maybe with, um, I'm forgetting the name of the perk, but that one that Meg has where you like are light on your feet. You know, lightweight? Worked, lightweight, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I think it could I, work I, with that a little bit. But. Yeah, I think that's a natural perk. Um, her main perks are Sprint Burst, oh, Adrenaline, one, right? and Quick and Quiet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Quick and Quiet was what I was thinking of, I think. So. Yes, Quick and Quiet. There it is, yeah. Yeah. I think with Quick and Quiet, this could work maybe as a decent combo, perhaps. But, I mean, it's nice if you want to, you know, just go from generator to generator. Just, you know, okay, I did a generator, and I just sprint away. People <clears> aren't going to know where you are. So I could see it being used, you know, somewhat situationally, depending on the type of playstyle <clears> you use. Right, Yeah. I, I don't I don't see it useful at all because there there are other perks that if you wanted that and needed that you have things like uh, empathy when if you're wounded uh, the person can see you across the map and you have uh, bond where you can actually just know where everyone is within I think 32 meters right? right so yes and no you know if they've activated the generator you're gonna know someone's activated a generator you get alerted where it is. So I don't, yeah, I don't personally, I would never use it, personally. Yeah, I think for my play style, I might try it out, but I mean, I'm also still fairly new, so for me, it right. might be worth trying out. But... Always worth trying out the perks, that's how you, you know, you really get exactly. to, yeah, of course. But I think this last perk, they actually made simply for me, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, yes. So, they, you know, I thought of you right podcast. away. Yeah, they heard my podcast, and they made this perk <laughs> simply for me, so. I thought of you right away, man. <laughs> <laughs> the last one is called Head On, and when your mind is set, there's no better, no one standing in your way. While standing in a locker for three seconds, Head On activates. While Head On is activated, performing a rush action to leave locker stuns the killer for three seconds if they're standing within range. It causes the exhausted status effect for 60, 50, or 40 seconds. So basically, this is made for people like me that like to hide in lockers. You can just go in a locker, pop out real quick, stun the killer, and run away. That sounds about right. <laughs> Which is actually, it's really effective. I haven't used it uh, yet. I haven't uh, put anything on her, but uh, it is. It can definitely be useful with people that love their their lockers. Um, it does buy you a good amount of time jumping out of there um, <clears throat> and stunning the killer to give you some run time. Uh, especially for a guy like Blaze's playing style, I think yeah. it would be really. I think this perk, perk is like a necessity for me once I get it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a clutch perk uh, for you, definitely. <laughs> yes. so, so see, I don't have to learn not to go in lockers. I can just use this perk instead. <laughs> yeah, I actually like that perk a lot. Um, definitely, I give it number two for sure. That's a really good perk uh, out of her three. Yeah. And do you think this could be like a big annoyance for killers at all? You think the killers will you know be salty about this one or not? Yeah, I've I've seen some, uh, you know, I've watched some uh, some streamers and YouTubers do it, and yeah, they they do get upset because it's actually at a certain radius. Like if the killer doesn't even go near the locker and they walk by you, they can still do it. They can come out of the locker and stun the the killer. And they'll get upset because they were like, I wasn't even near it, you know, and they're already complaining about oh, that. So say, for example, yeah. I was a survivor and you were the killer. Say you're walking next to my locker. You don't even know I'm in there. I could just pop out and you don't even know I'm in there and it's on you. Yes. Interesting. I thought I had to be like, I thought I had to be where the killer's <laughs> about to open the door. That's the only time it works, but that's not the no. case. No, it doesn't seem to be the case. Like, actually, I even think it's, it's that radius, uh, how deep that radius is within the eight meters. Um. Yeah, you can get stunned. So I've seen their their backs completely away from the locker, and you know they could have just stayed in there. No, they stunned them. So it's almost a ran. more powerful flashlight in some cases, I guess. Yes, it's a it's a definitely a powerful stun. So for four seconds, I think it's as high as four seconds that they can be stunned. So that gives you that that actually gives you more time than decisive strike to get away. Right. Mm -hmm. So maybe this will be, you know, a little bit more meta for people. We'll see. I mean, <laughs> I haven't seen too many people use it yet, <clears throat> but um, it's definitely useful uh, in the beginning. If you're, you know, if you're comfortable with lockers and you feel like that's your go-to, I think um, 
it'll be good for your beginning stages, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, if I see this in um, the part where I can buy it, I, I, I'm drawing a blank here, but where I can actually buy the perk, I'm going to buy it right away. Like, Oh, yeah, so be Shrine a, of a Secrets, key. yes. There you go, Shrine <laughs> of Secrets, yeah. <laughs> so I'm definitely buying this right away if I see it in there. <laughs> I definitely but, think a lot of people will try it out and get it for sure. The one thing I see where this could be a little bit broken in the survivor's favor, maybe, is if a killer knows you're in there, say you're you're a killer, right, and you watch me walk in a locker, what are you supposed to do? You know I'm in the locker, but if I have this perk on, you know I'm in the locker, but you can't do anything. So if you walk next to me, I'm going to stun you. If they get into that situation where they discover they've already done it, they, I think they... They'll, I, I, I don't know. I think they'll still try and get stunned, hoping that it's another survivor. But yeah, I, I haven't come across that situation yet. What the killers would right. want to do, even a plague, like, can you puke on the locker? Will it get it corrupted? Uh, I don't even know if the the locker. Well, especially the if like say, say you're the killer and you already, I've already stunned you once with this. If you already know that I'm the survivor that has this perk on, that's especially bad because like you're like, well, I know he's gonna stun me again, like. I, I guess, do I leave him alone? Like, what do I do here? <laughs> that definitely leaves an interesting moment into the game. So, yeah, I don't know. It would be interesting to know. <laughs> yeah, interesting. So that's that's the one thing I could see, you know, some uh, drawback on is, like, it kind of leaves the killer defenseless in that situation because especially if you already know they have the perk, you know they went in the locker, you're kind of defenseless. You can't really do anything. You either walk up and get stunned or you walk away. I think the high-level ones won't care. They'll go in. They're ruthless. You know, they'll just do it, boom, right. okay, you're out of it, I'll come get you. But, um, yeah, I don't know. That'll be interesting. I guess we'll have to see how people play a little bit. You know, it's kind of, it's not been out long enough to really find out how people are going to play that situation. So <laughs> Definitely not, man. But I know the ruthless ones, the high level ranks, they won't care. I know they'll just go right in for it. Because you can only stay in that locker so long, right? The, true, if you're true. St- yeah. But that is the end of that chapter. So Demise of the Faithful, that's all you get in that. But we actually had a new Survivor Pack release as well, and this was pretty cool too, you know. Uh, I don't know if anyone's a fan of Pokemon, but we actually had a new Survivor from Pokemon. Ash Ketchum from Pallet Town came out, and you got some great perks there. You got Gotta Catch Em All. You got I Choose You, and my favorite one's actually Pallet Town. This one actually slowly regenerates down pallets, and you start the game with one extra pallet on the map. <laughs> Say Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, you haven't heard this yet. Yeah, no. I, well, you're gonna enlighten me on this one. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not actually it. <laughs> it. It was great. You had me. You had me at Pokemon. Everyone at home was like, "Wait a minute, wait." He sounds so serious right now. What? <laughs> that was all good. That was good. It's a good. It was a good one. I thought it'd be funny, though, especially since, you know, anyone that knows a little bit of Pokemon, I mean, I haven't paid up attention with it in years, but, you know, years and years ago when I was younger, I actually played it, and he's actually from Pallet Town, so I thought it'd be really funny that, you know, he's from Pallet Town, and Dead by Daylight's about pallets, you know, so <laughs> I thought it'd be funny if he has a perk called Pallet Town that regenerates pallets. <laughs> that was a good one. Don't worry, I never knew I could do the rock eyebrow until now. <laughs> I've been trying for years, you got me to do it. See, you even knew it was coming. I still it. See, like, wait a minute. That's, that's a really thing. <laughs> <laughs> no so, comment. So, you know, if they use that perk in the future, you know, I want a little bit of cutback from that perk. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> People will be like, oh, there's a regenerating pallet one. He knew. He knew it was coming. <laughs> Palace came back. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I mean, to be honest with you, it's not a bad idea for a perk. Like, I mean, we don't have any perks in the game that regenerate pallets. So, you know, if a, if a pallet's already gone, like, maybe every time a generator is done, a new pallet, like, pops back on the map. That'd be kind of cool, actually. Agreed. Why not? <laughs> hey, worth a try, right? So, <laughs> put, a, put a little light in the darkness. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's a good That'd be a like. <laughs> <laughs> He definitely would not fit in this world, though. <laughs> you don't know. I, I'd rather have that because it gives hope for maybe a Chucky. Like we always talked about getting a Chucky right. killer. Instead of him putting you on the shoulder, he grabs you by the ankles and drags you to the hook. You know, it would be great. <laughs> yeah, that'd be funny. <laughs> he walks to the stepladder. And he hops over. He can hop over uh, 
you know, pallets and all that stuff and windows. Like, he'll be so fast. Like, pallets are nothing, you know? Maybe, you know, this Ash, he throws out a Pokeball and the Pikachu pops out. <laughs> and the killer has to shake Pikachu and said. Yeah, man. That'd be his, that would be his, like, super cool strength. Like, the, the jumping power, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, there you go, Dead by Daylight. You know, you have a new idea for a survivor. You know, Ash from Pokemon. You can throw him in there. There can be two Ashes. <laughs> See what I'm saying? That's great. All I ask for in return is maybe a Michael Myers mask, uh, yeah, a couple props, <laughs> some t-shirts. Thank you very much. <laughs> but no, the actual Survivor Pack, do you want to tell people what the actual Survivor Pack is, not the joke one? <laughs> yes, the uh, so from the Evil Dead's uh, popular character, Ashley Joanna Williams, a.k.a. Ash. He uh, was the popular lone wolf of the films. He is in... He is in the house. Um, he was launched April 2nd, so just a couple days ago. Uh, and, you know, he, uh, yeah, he is an exclusive, obviously. He is another licensed, this time survivor. Usually we're used to uh, licensed killers. I believe this is, yes, the first licensed uh, character we are getting uh, for the Xbox. Otherwise, uh, I believe PC got Bill. From uh, one of the video games, I believe, Left 4 Dead. Oh, he's exclusive to only Xbox? Uh, no, I was just saying, out of four Xbox, this is the first time Xbox uh, oh, okay. I was gonna will say, be like, getting. I yeah. thought you were saying he's only on Xbox. I'm like, I didn't know that. No, I, that'd be great. Yeah, that'd be Take cool. it, PC. <laughs> we get some love, yeah. too. You know? <laughs> that'd be kind of cool. But... <laughs> yeah, it would be. Uh, but no, um, yeah, he's in this game. He's cool. Um, they came out with some, re- some really cool cosmetics. I couldn't help myself. Uh, he, you know, obviously, uh, Ash has a hand that uh, was missing, so he could put chainsaws into him, and he has, like, a metal hand. Well, as a cosmetic, you can get your very own puppet of Ash with a chainsaw as a replacement right hand. I couldn't resist. I got on that train. <laughs> so I, did. I pretty much pimped out my Ash. Uh, and they actually got Bruce Campbell to do the voice work for him. Too, he, so. he does it. And, you know, they did a really good job because he's usually when you, you know, your characters are silent in lobby, he's talking all the time. Like he'll be saying stuff when you jump in the lobby. He's like, oh, my gosh, what now? Or he's like, uh, what are we doing here? Or, you know, he's he's always talking. <laughs> right. He's always saying stuff. Um, and he's got uh, I think he's uh, up there in the top three of yells when dying when put in dying state so when a killer knocks you down he's got one of those epic yells you remember we're always talking about each character has a unique yell well he he's definitely up there uh i won't spoil it you'll have to see for yourself but uh yeah (laughs) i'm definitely excited to get him and honestly i might be more excited to get him than the actual defines the faceful pack because you know ash is such an iconic character and i almost want to have ash more than i want to have the the plague but i i do want them both though yeah, I would say, um, especially you being a Survivor main anyways, and if you are a fan of, obviously, the Evil Dead, you're definitely going to want to jump on the Ash Train. I definitely jumped on the Ash Train with my cool puppet hand, and uh, <laughs> I've, I've been having fun adjusting to the character itself. Uh, it's funny because he was a smoker. He, when he's running, you can hear him. <laughs> like he, he's got right. all these unique voices. Uh, it's the first time they actually did this, like, they have his personality, and they've added so much more on top of uh, what he is, right? So what normal survivors are, they've added this guy's personality into the game, too. So it's cool. Which is really cool, yeah. And he actually comes with a pretty cool purse, too. Um, His first perk we're going to talk about is one of my favorite purses that he has, and it's called Flip Flop. You have an uncanny ability to escape the inevitable. While in the dying state, 50% of your recovery progression is converted into wiggle progression. When you are picked up by the killer, up to a maximum of 40, 45, or 50% wiggle progression. So, basically what this means is that while you're in the dying state, you can actually get your wiggle progression up there. To when the killer picks you up, you actually have half that bar already filled up. Yes. So, I've been actually using this perk a lot. I've got it at tier 3 Um... I was playing quite a bit with it yesterday. So, yes, when you're put into a dying state, say he walks away, it gives you time. I can recover um, up to that 50%. So as soon as he comes back for me, if, you know, so it happens to that situation, I have 50% chance of wiggling out. So if there is no hook nearby, I get another chance. 
So I've been using that one out of all of them so far. I think that's my favorite one. Um, it's a really good perk. Just to get out of it, it gives you a chance. If he doesn't pick you up instantly, you know uh, the ties have turned, right? So really right. good. The only negative I will say for it is it does require the killer to slug you a little bit because if the killer's the one the killers that picks you up instantly, it doesn't really do any benefit. No, if he picks you up instantly, then no, right? But if it leaves you that open window where he sees another killer and he wants to get him, or a survivor rather, and he wants to get him, uh, it buys you some crucial time. Uh, so really cool right. stuff. Kind of like, you know, we've mentioned Hillbilly a couple times this episode. It's actually a great perk versus Hillbilly because a lot of Hillbillies seem to want to slug. So if you're facing a Hillbilly, this might actually work out pretty well for you. Exactly. That's uh, another another good one, especially against Hillbilly, yes. And, you know, I could see it working out against my pig as well because the pig is going to take a couple of seconds to actually put that trap on your head, too. So you have a couple of seconds to get some wiggle. Yeah, it buys you. Uh, definitely time is, is of the essence, so but it does buy you some time. But it really, from what I was using it, they it, they just need to step away for a bit or get cocky. You know, sometimes they do their head shake and kind of troll you. It's good, good. Keep doing that while I'm... But I think uh, killers are now seeing, okay, I got to watch out for this ash. I got to pick him up instantly because I, I noticed from day one when I played him right off the bat... Uh, killers, you know, I was finding myself in an advantage where I can do this, you know, recover and get that wiggle time. Right. But yesterday, instantly, it was like they were in a rush to to pick pick you up. So <laughs> they're they're catching on quickly. I can't I can't mess around with that. But this perk by itself, if it's not on Ash, then you can really catch them by surprise because say you're playing like a Meg yes. or something like that. They might not expect this perk on a Meg, so then you can kind of trip them by surprise. Exactly. They never will uh, expect it. So it gives you one heck of an advantage there as well. Definitely. Absolutely. Do you want to read our next perk for Ash? Mine, again, it's saying bad note trial. Okay. <laughs> like it's saying uh, bad title, so I can't see it. But I definitely know what the perk uh, the perks are. Just, okay, uh, <laughs> I'll read it over this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the next one is called Buckle Up. This unlocks potential in one's aura reading ability. <clears throat> the recovery progress of dying survivors can be determined by intensity of their auras at a distance of up to 48 meters. And then when you heal a survivor in the dying state to injured, both the healed survivor and yourself see the killer's aura for a duration of 4, 5, or 6 seconds. Right. Yeah, so with that one, obviously it, it's, it's, it's self-explanatory for itself. You're healing them in the dying state and they're injured. Uh, I, I, I don't know what to say about this one. That's kind of uh, how I felt too. That's why I don't really yeah, say yeah, much. I'm yeah, like, yeah, I don't you really know, like, like <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's basically telling you what it is, and that's exactly what it is. I just don't find it uh, something that's really useful at all. I definitely uh, was trying to get the adept achievement yesterday with it, and I got to tell you the the two perks that he has. Man, it was. It was giving me a lot of trouble. I'll tell you that much. It was just not. <laughs> right. This one was. I did it. I did a healing process. Someone was in a dying state. Uh, mine didn't activate a couple times until finally uh, it worked um, when I was healing someone in a dying state. But um, yeah, I don't. I don't find this useful. I don't think people are going to use it much. I really don't. You know, I think. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I can think of in my head is if the killer has nurses calling on, this could give you a little bit of a warning that they're coming for you. Yeah, you can see them coming. Uh, the, the meters are good, right? Like 48 meters does give you time because nurses calling, I think it will only go as high as 28 meters. So if they're looking around, you'll, you can be aware. Um, I just, uh, not recommended perk. I don't, I don't think you should even waste your time trying it, even though all survivors should try and see if they like something like this. I just don't find any benefit whatsoever with this perk. Yeah, I'm kind of with you there. I mean, <laughs> unless you're going for the adept achievement, I probably wouldn't use this. So that's yeah, that's perfect. that's all I did. Yeah, and now it's now an official retirement slot. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not, right. I'm not jump, I'm not jumping into that ship again. So no. And the last one, I actually think is a little bit more interesting than that one, but. Uh, I definitely wouldn't say it's better than Flip Flop. It's called Metal of Man. Evil has a way mm -hmm. of always finding you. After getting hit three times by a killer's basic attack, Metal of Man activates. Once activated, the next occasion that will put you in a dying state from injured state is ignored. The next time you heal back to full health, your aura will be revealed to the killer when you are farther from 12, 14, mm -hmm. or 16 meters away from the killer. And then it will deactivate the next time you're put into the dying state. Yeah, it's another perk where I was like, okay, it would be interesting to give it a shot. 
but I find that it's another perk that is reminds me of uh, Object of Obsession. If uh, if you don't know what Object of Obsession is, it's basically if you're looking into the direction of the killer, they will be able to see you, you will be able to see them, and then as soon as you turn away, it removes it, right? Now, I'm not a fan of exposing my aura when the killers already have such a great advantage of just yeah. killing you, right? And and, and getting a, a head start with you with scratch marks and whatnot. This was yet another perk that I found useless. Um, and it actually increases your chances of being the obsession too, is this, so... Yeah, well, this is definitely an obsession. For, like, I was obsession every time when I had this one. I was trying to, I've tried. It took me three attempts to get the adept. And so I was obsession every time. Um, so you definitely will be. Um, increases your chances? No, it, it is. Unless you have decisive strike, maybe it'll be a juggle of who randomly will get it. Um, yeah, another perk where I find that it will be definitely useless um, to to have. But I get it. You're running out of stuff, DVD. <laughs> You're running out of ideas. No, I'm <laughs> joking. No, they can't make a super survivor. Obviously, I get it. I mean, but I just you can find tell this... me if you agree with this, but like, yeah. I kind of see this as a poor man's version of Dead Heart because basically with this, yeah. pretty much all it's doing for you is it's ignoring one hit from the killer, but in contrast for that, you have to give up where you actually show your order to the killer and your the possession. So, like, it's really not a good trade off It's basically, you know, you get yeah. the one mm. free hit that Dead Heart gives you, but you get yes. all this negative on top of it, so you're you're better yes. off just take Dead Heart. Yeah, I, I I totally agree. I just uh, well, Dead Heart would be the way to go, um, uh, because this is yeah, you're exposing yourself from the hit. Then no, but I also understand if you didn't have that, how people would complain as well um, if you lose them or whatnot. But um, I don't know. I, I I again another perk. Maybe they'll buff down the road and kind of add to it. Make it make it a little stronger. I think the I think that buckle up and this one uh, can probably be a little bit tweaked. Yeah, I think especially the Metal of Man one can be tweaked. I mean, buckle mm -hmm. up is kind of like a, it's kind of a throwaway for me. But Metal of Man I think could be good mm -hmm. if they just tweak it to where it's helpful for the survivors more. Like, right. Maybe instead of you know twelve, fourteen, or sixteen meters, maybe it's something like you know twenty eight meters away. That at least gives you a little bit of room to actually you know not be revealed. Yeah, I think so, and I think that. It would be good for console gamers just because Dead Hard is pretty much useful, useless on console at times. Like console uh, users do not like use Dead Hard. <laughs> no, we don't use Dead Hard because it doesn't. It's not efficient for some reason. It just doesn't work as well. PC users, a lot of them use Dead Hard because it works. Um, unfortunately, they still haven't found a way where they can have it work on console uh, as efficiently. But uh, this would probably be the great substitute for it. If they would tweak it, but I understand, um, probably be a huge advantage for PC guys, uh, survivors as well. So yeah, so I mean, they could tweak this up, but you know, at least he has flip flop. Flip flop's a pretty decent perk. Um, it's obviously a little bit situational. So I kind of wish Ash, you know, he's such an iconic character. I kind of wish they had a little bit better perks for him, but it is what it is. At least you get to play as Ash. At least you get to play as Ash, and it's good. And you know what? I was happy because I got self care in one of my blood webs with him. So, <laughs> I, I guess go. I can heal myself when I'm wounded. Um, you know, so. I mean, the good wait, thing, too, is, like, with the survivors, all the perks just interchange together anyway. So, if you don't yes. like these perks, then at least you're playing as Ash. You get the skin that you like. You, know, you get the Ash skin. And then you can just put whatever perks you want on them. Absolutely. So, again, it's just a skin. You can add. You can get any perk you'd like. Um, and, and just roll with uh, the character you like. You enjoy using most. Exactly. But, you know, that is... Uh, the survivor pack so before we go do you have a favorite perk that we've talked about today from all nine perks um definitely i would dig the uh i believe it is intervention right the corruption intervention so the the plague perk where right. for two minutes you get that tier three they block the generators from that distance uh if you're if the killer is farthest away from whatever i think that just totally slows down the i game. agree I, I think out of the nine we've yeah. talked about that has to be the perk but i do have to give an honorable mention to head on just because of my play style so your bias self because <laughs> yeah your bias self of the lockers <laughs> which is yes. it is also it is good that is also very situational but blaze does find himself <laughs> nestling up into that wonderful red box quite <laughs> exactly a bit. At least a few times during a game, so I can understand. 
<laughs> Definitely. <laughs> but hey, it, it's worked out for me more than you think it would. You know, a lot of times it works out better than you think where a killer just walks right by me. I'm like, yes, I tricked them. <laughs> yes, which is a good thing. But I always say, don't, if you're doing a gen and he comes by and he's like, where the heck is this? I have no scratch marks. <laughs> right. Don't go to that generator next to it. He will know. Mm, let me check. Can't be. Oh, it is. You know what I mean? Well, and you're gone. But I could have poised on too so that they won't know where I am anyways. <laughs> That would not help. <laughs> they, will, they, they will go and check anyway, so there they're going to hop right in there. <laughs> but, yeah, this was definitely fun. I'm glad we got to talk about these. And this is kind of like I was saying, you know, it would have been like a two-hour episode if we talked about the killer, you know, tips as well. So that's kind of where we yeah. split it up. <laughs> yeah, definitely, man. Uh, well, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, we're definitely going to talk about uh, killer uh, strategies and whatnot the next one. So it's going to be super Absolutely. exciting. Yeah, but real quick, um, just to end, we my news again is next stream is going to be Sunday, twelve to four Eastern. It'll be co-op for Generation Zero. We're going to be playing with OTG, who is uh, OTG Zero, who is next up Mixer streamer. So you can find that on Mixer dot com slash Blaze Experience. Next podcast is going to be Saturday, four thirteen, on the Choose Your Own Apocalypse update with State of Decay Two. I'm going to have a round table of guests, and hopefully, there's all going to be guests that have never been on the podcast before or they've been on very few times to kind of get some different perspectives there and i do want to give a shout out one more time to our patreon members otg zero coconut kid one two three and maximilian colby thank you all for being patreon members i really appreciate that and if you want to join yourself it's going to be patreon.com slash blaze experience that's p-a-t-r-e-o-n and then uh, where to find us? Uh, where can people find you, AC? Uh, well, you can find me uh, on Mixer at ACC underscore in caps. You can see me. I'm pretty much on almost every day. So you can come out and hang out and hang with my community and we'll all have a laugh making fun of me. <laughs> you can come Absolutely. on down there. Uh, check me on Twitter at ACC underscore streams. Uh, and that's about it. And for me, you can find me via email if you want to, theblazeexperience at gmail.com. You can find me on Twitter and Xbox, both at Blaze Experience. That's capital B L A I S E, capital X P E R I E N C E. You can find me on Discord. That'll be in the show notes. So you can join my Discord and you can get news about the podcast or streaming first. That's where I post everything qu most quickly. I'm also on YouTube. I don't use YouTube that often. So if you leave comments on YouTube, I will get back to them. But sometimes it takes me a while just because. YouTube basically only use it to take the podcast and throw it on YouTube. So that's all I'm using it for right now. In the future, maybe I'll utilize it more, but right now I'm not using it too much. And then if you want to find the podcast, you're obviously listening to it, but other ways you can find it you might not know about, you can find it on Stitcher, you can find it on iTunes, Spotify, Radio Public, Blueberry, Podbean, Google Podcasts, and many other directories. I probably can't think of them all right now, but there's a ton of them, so... Check us out. Uh, just search for the Blaze Experience, and you'll find us, you know, in Google somewhere. And if you don't like apps for some reason, then that's totally fine. You can just join my Discord, and I have a direct link to every episode in my Discord, so you can do that instead if you'd like. But ACC, I want to thank you again for being on here. I really appreciate it. So thank you so much. The pleasure was mine as always, man. Look forward to the next. Absolutely, and thank you to the listener for listening to the Blaze Experience. <laughs>